Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity. May your spirit guide us in this presentation. We plead with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Greetings, brothers and sisters, colleagues and friends all over the world. I welcome you all in a very special way. My name is Kudza H. Gogora, your host, and this is the Herald Report Ministry. We are ever thankful and grateful for the love and goodness of God. And today we are focusing on climate change. Green Sabbath needed for revival, bring back the blue laws. We are looking at uh, the subject of climate change. Many of us are well aware of what is happening in the world. There is a demand, there is a growing demand for the National Sunday Law, especially in the United States of America. And we could see many things are being done to coerce people to ensure that they accept that there is a serious problem that is caused by a climate change and we need to do something to ensure that we have dealt with this problem. There has been a lot of discussion, especially in the World Economic Forum. As you remember, uh, we covered this few days ago that the World Economic Forum, they actually say climate change and disinformation are the most severe threat in 2024. So climate change is a very serious threat, so they say, and uh, they brought this graph which actually shows that disinformation, misinformation and disinformation is the first priority to be dealt with and extreme weather events is the second priority in the next two years. But however, in the next 10 years, extreme weather events will be very serious. This will be caused by the climate change. So we need to do something to deal with this very quickly before this problem has overwhelmed us. However, as we have uh, discussed before, uh, following COP28 World Economic Forum and where we are today, we know for sure that the climate change policy is the policy of the papacy which is well chronicled or well documented in the Laudato Si and the whole world today is trying to abide by this principle. We have already gone through the book of Revelation chapter 13, especially on verse 3, and we clarified that the whole world will wander after the beast. And how are they going to do that? They will follow the policies of the beast. And in chapter 13, we've realized that there is a beast from the sea and there's a beast on the land. The beast from the sea, which is the purpose, she, in, she was inflicted a deadly wound in 1798 by Napoleon or through his general Bathier. But however, she is going to regain her prominence again. And the beast on the land, which is America, Revelation chapter 13, verse 12, will empower the first beast and he will lead everyone to follow the first beast and everyone will wander after the policies of the first beast and America will work very hard to ensure that she has propelled the first beast. Now verse 16, the Bible says, and he calls it all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bound to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads and that no man might buy nor sell save he that is a mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So this is what America will do. We will force everyone to accept the mark of the beast. We will force everyone to rest on Sunday. Remember the mark of the beast is the national Sunday law, is the Sunday, national Sunday rest by law. Now as they are pushing this agenda, now this is actually on a very high level. As we learned uh, two weeks ago, as we were talking about the push by the evangelical. And there are good reasons which are being used to justify Sunday law. And uh, we should be on, a guard, on the guard because as they are pushing these reasons, we have seen the way how they've pushed in COP28. We have seen the way how they have pushed in the World Economic Forum and now they are also using other means to ensure that everyone can comply. Brothers and sisters, we have been warned in the councils for the church that God has revealed what is to take place in the last days and that his people may be prepared for to stand against the tempest of opposition and wrath. So God has warned us that a storm is coming. As the storm is coming, we should be prepared for the 
prepared for this storm because if we are not prepared this storm will definitely overwhelm us and it will be the storm of the national sunday law where we cannot buy nor sell except we have the mark of the beast and the mark of the beast is the national sunday is the sunday rest by law the declaration of the national sunday law this will be the mark of the beast and it will be aged upon all of us we are told that we are to be as men waiting for the Lord, not in idle expectancy, but in earnest work with unwavering faith. It is no time now to allow our minds to be engrossed with things of minor importance. While men are sleeping, Satan is actively arranging matters so that the Lord's people may not have mercy or justice. Brothers and sisters, this is no time to sleep. It's time to awake from our slumber. It's time to focus. It's time to seriously consider the task which God has given us and to do it diligently as God gives us strength and power because our time is limited. Let's think, think guys. Let's think, my brother, serious, serious, seriously. How am I involved in the mission? What am I doing in to prepare for this crisis? What exactly am I putting in place? How is my relationship? with God. To understand this message theoretically is very good, but however, to prepare practically is much more critical. Now we are told that the Sunday movement is now making its way in darkness. The leaders are concealing the true issue and many who unite in the movement do not themselves see whether the undercurrent is tending. But now follow the last sentence which is very critical. Its professions are mild and apparently Christian. Now, those who are pushing for the National Sunday Law, they will do it in a mild manner. They will do it in a Christian language. They will do it in a loving language. And we will definitely believe that this is actually the will of God. But however, there is an undercurrent which is driving us to rebel against God. The moment when Sunday Law has been legislated, brothers and sisters, it will be very plain and clear. It it's not the plan of God because God has already legislated his Sabbath as we are going to learn shortly. We are told that but when it shall speak, it will reveal the spirit of the dragon. So when this policy will be implemented, it will reveal the spirit that is driving this, this, uh, this, this Sunday law or this, uh, this discourse or this uh, this policy and now today we want to focus on what is happening because in the washington post there is a very important article which is actually speaking so well but when you study it you really understand that the article is pushing for green sabbath is pushing for the national sunday law is promoting the agenda of the papacy now let's look at the post it says why reviving a 2,610 year old spiritual practice made my life better? So this was written by Michael Corin. I think I've actually read a uh, few of his articles before. This was posted on the January 23rd, 2024. So Michael Corin says, my life was revived because... I followed the old spiritual practice. Now, what is the old spiritual practice? Look at what it says. Every Friday around sunset, I close my lap for, for 24 hours. My work is done. No emails, no news, no social media. If it's work related, it waits. What I try to do is nothing at all or rather i spend time with people i love usually outdoors house house i swim or safe i share a meal with friends and family sometimes i just lie on my back in the park enjoying the sun now when you to those who are familiar with the sabbath commandment that's how exactly it sounds that's what we are supposed to do now he goes further for years, this one-day pause seemed unattainable. For many, it's virtually impossible to set aside an entire day for rest, free from responsibilities to work and families. But on the verge of burnout a few years ago, I began to practice a Sabbath. So the man says, I was burning up. I was stressed. I was about to give in. 
Then I decide to practice a Sabbath. In other words, I started resting at least one day a week. And then what happened? Giving myself permission to stop doing, doing was hard. My brain betrayed my intentions. Unconsciously led me to flick open my phone, check work emails, or scary ahead to a Monday that hadn't yet begun disconnecting to practice and it still does now look at the next paragraph but as the weeks rolled on i discovered a freedom i hadn't known i'd lost my sabbath jolted me out of a days in other words he's saying i was rejuvenated by the sabbath the man is talking about the sabbath of the lord the man no He's not, let me correct myself, the man is talking about his own Sabbath. He decided to have time to rest. And as he rested, he re realized that the law of health, resting rejuvenated him. But now the Bible talks of the benefits that comes from the Sabbath. Now the Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 58 verse 18, If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thy own ways, nor finding thy own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words, what will happen? Then shall thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So this is the promise which God has given us. When we rest on the Sabbath of the Lord, we will be fed with the heritage of Jacob. When we rest on the Sabbath of the Lord, we will be greatly blessed. When we rest on the Sabbath of the Lord, we will be rejuvenated. But now, brothers and sisters, I want us to go further with this article because there is something. I am The verses which I'm reading, I am not in agreement with this author. I want to be honest. I'm not in agreement, but what he says so far seems to be very plausible. And if you just read, uh, uh, if when you read it, you may feel or you may think that he is talking that people should keep the Sabbath of the Lord, but he is addressing a very different subject altogether. Now look at this. For millennia, religious had regarded this ritual rest as a spiritual necessity. Yet clergy are now arguing that this practice, whether it in a secular or religious context, can help redirect the world societies away from catastrophic climate change. In this view, in their view, it's as essential to the future as any clean energy technology or electrical vehicle. Now, look at this is what he's talking about. He is talking about climate change. And he's saying the Sabbath rest will help to reduce or to slow, slow down climate change. He is actually saying the Sabbath rest, when we rest on the Sabbath, this benefits the earth. Now he is not talking of the seventh day of the week Sabbath. He is just talking about any day of rest during the week as beneficial to your health, which is correct. But now he is going further to say also as beneficial to climate change. Brothers and sisters, that's a hoax. Now let's go further. A shared day of rest at a minimum might slow the pace of consumption, curb emissions, and ease the burden of so many people working weary weekends. You see? A shared day of rest will slow down the pace of consumption. So, and also curb emissions. So where is this gentleman coming from? He is talking the language of the papacy. He is talking the language of Laudota Si. He is talking the language of the climate change. This has nothing to do with the Sabbath of the Lord. It says, but slowing down even for a day may also be at the heart of the cultural change, convincing society that a more sustainable way of life is not only good for the planet, but also for them. Here is how a green Sabbath may be the right idea for one soul in the world. So let's have the green Sabbath where we don't drive. The green Sabbath where we don't go to work. 
the green Sabbath, where we spend time resting, rejuvenating. And when we do this, we will help the Mother Earth. But brothers and sisters, that's not new. In the context of the truth, God gave humanity the Sabbath. But now, the author is also very, the author is saying this practice started 2,600 years ago. The concept is very clear in Christianity. You also find it in Islam, in Buddhism, also in the religions of Japan. But now let's go to the next paragraph. Say the first reference to mandated, mandated rest, however, probably appears in Torah. And then it describes the Sabbath as depicted in the law of God. But now, brothers and sisters, here it is. The Sabbath was a mandate and is a mandate for the children of God. Now let's actually go to the article. It says, where ancient Israelites were commanded to seize their total uh, toil from Friday evening until Saturday at sunset, a period known as Shabbat in the Jewish calendar, according to uh, Jonathan Soch, a professor of Jewish religious and intellectual history at German University uh, of uh, Potsdam. This commandment led the interpretation beginning no less ba banning no less than 39 types of work among them, sewing, baking, lighting a fire, uh, sewing two stitches and tearing to sew two stitches. Well, that's what the professor said. This is actually according to the Jews, uh, the, the tradition of the Jews. But however, the question is, is this, is, this, is, this, is that what the Bible says? The Bible doesn't teach it that way anyway. I'll come to the Bible shortly. And then it says, the ancient Israelites' prohibitions were not a random assortment of activities or a call of uh, ascetism. It was the embodiment of simple commandments, holy enough to end its place among the top ten. Live the world as you find it by keeping the Sabbath. Well, that's what they say. Live the world as you find it by keeping the Sabbath. And in the language of the papacy, let's look after the Mother Earth. But brothers and sisters, God has warned us and God has given us the command. And God has told us the reason why we keep the Sabbath. We don't keep the Sabbath because of the Mother Earth, to preserve the Mother Earth. We don't keep the Sabbath because of climate change. No, this is false. We keep the Sabbath because God commanded. Because from Genesis chapter 2 verse 1, God created the heavens and the earth in six days. And on the seventh day, he rested and he ended his work. As God rested, he blessed the Sabbath day. He sanctified it. He set it apart. And then he gave it to humanity as a gift. And chapter 31 verse 17 of Exodus says, the Sabbath is a sign between us and uh, and God. It was a sign between God and the children of Israel forever. For gener from generation to generation because in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Therefore the children of God or the Israelites or those who believe in the God who created the heaven and earth, they will rest on the Sabbath in honor to God who created the heaven and earth. And, and the earth, not in honor to climate change, not in order to preserve the earth, not to, in order to uh, reduce the emission. Now the question is, how should we rest? Who should rest? What kind of work should I do? When you go to the commandment of Exodus chapter uh, 20 verse 8, the Bible says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. In six days I should labor and do all my work. But on the seventh day, I rest because it's the Sabbath of the Lord. I should do no work, neither my son nor my daughter, nor my main servant, nor my mid servant, nor my cattle, nor the stranger that is within my gates. Everything that I have will keep the Sabbath. My car will keep the Sabbath. My children will keep the Sabbath. My animals will keep the Sabbath. My house will keep the Sabbath. Ev 
everything I have will give glory and honor to the God who created heaven and earth. This is the reason for the Sabbath. Now look at verse 11. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and he rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So, because God created, we keep the Sabbath. Because God blessed, he sanctified, he set it apart, and then he gave us as a gift. That's why Jesus, in Mark chapter 2, he says, the Sabbath was made for men and not men for the Sabbath. We are not slaves of the Sabbath. But the Sabbath is a gift to us to do the things that gives glory and honor to God. But now, brothers and sisters, let me come to the actual reason why this article is written and also what is being promoted. Look at this paragraph. Pope Francis argued much the same about Christianity Sunday in his 2015 Laudata Si and encyclical about caring for the natural world. Not resting is just bed to the soul, he says, but it's also bed to the earth. So now the reason for resting is for the soul and also for the earth. The cost and drive to produce and consume more is squandering natural resources. It prevents us from treating the living world and one uh, is preventing us from treating the living world and one another with dignity and respect. The Sabbath forces us to consider how we spend all our days. Brothers and sisters, the Pope doesn't talk so much of the Sabbath, he talks of Sunday. So, as you can see, he's pushing two things. Resting of the soul and resting of the Mother Earth or the planet Earth, as he calls it. He calls it the Mother Earth. The common good, according to Laudata Si. Now it says, Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, is meant to be a day which heals our relationships with God, with others, with ourselves, with others, and with the world. Francis writes, we tend to demean contemplative rest as something unproductive and necessary, but this is to do away with the very thing which is most important about work, its meaning. So, he has clarified that is addressing the subject of Sunday. Sunday law by rest. And shortly it will be amended. But you know, this article goes on to say something very interesting. It says, Shabbat is one of the most radical things you could do. So, is he suggesting that we should take this radical measure? Oh yes, the Bible has already told us what to do. But now what exactly, where is he driving us to this author? He quoted this uh, person called uh, Bellows, who, who credits the ritual of avoiding burnout. One of the reasons we have a climate crisis right now is a product of disconnection, the result of undervaluing life, especially non-human life. Shabbat is a time of remembering we are not machines. We get to be human with all other life. The kind of connection is what powers environmental and climate movements. You know, the scheme of the devil is to interwoove truth and error, to interwoove biblical truth and the devil's lies and you will not discover the subtle errors that the devil is bringing. Brothers and sisters, if you are to observe the Sabbath in the radical way, what radical climate change laws should be put in place to ensure that a radical change is taking place? This will bring back the blue laws. Now, what happened during the Blue Laws? People were forced. People were compelled. There was a law to close shops. There was a law not to do anything. People were limited in what they can do. Look at what he says. Sunday restrictions were once common across United States. 
sometimes known as blue laws. They prohibited things such as selling liquor, hunting and opening shops, intend in part to encourage Sunday church attendance. Very interesting, is it? To ensure that everybody goes to church, they shut the beer halls. They prevented, they shut down the shops. And they said, let everyone go to church. Are they bringing this radical measure again? The answer is yes. It goes on to say, the U.S. Supreme Court declared in 1884 that these also served a vital social mission to protect all persons from the physical and moral debasement which comes from uninterrupted labor, especially to the poor and dependent, to the laborers in our factories and workshops and in the heated rooms of our cities. Correct. You need rest for your soul. You need rest physically. You need communion. That's very good. However, this has been mixed with error. It goes on to say the decision was reaffirmed by the court in decisions during the 1960s. Sunday is a day apart from all nations. Sunday is a day apart from, for, from all others, wrote Chief Justice L. Warren in one. So now what's so special about Sunday? Because it's been it's the it's the day of the papacy. What's so special about Sunday? Because it's the vehicle that will be used to bring. In fact, it will be declared as the mark of the beast. What's so special about Sunday? Because it's a day for the Antichrist. Now it says in 2019. Scotch founded the Green Sabbath Project to incite a mass movement to observe a weekly day of rest for the secular and religious alike. So it's no longer about worship, the secular and religious alike. So the Green Sabbath Project is being pushed for all to observe whether you may be secular or whether you may be a Christian. All are to observe the Green Sabbath. Now he says the immediate effect among millions of people he calculates could deal back emissions for at least one day a week with no new technology or spending. So we disagree on fossil fuel. We disagree with many things, but at least on the Sabbath, just one day a week National Sunday rest by law, we would definitely cut emissions. And this is cost effective. Says, so but the practice of doing nothing, he edges, can make people change the way they live year round by appealing to an ancient human ritual rather than reason or even religion. So you don't need reason on this one. You don't even need religion. Let's go to the ancient ritual. But brothers and sisters, is the Sabbath of the Lord a ritual? They are definitely not addressing the seventh, the fourth commandment. Says the Scotch is, Scotch is now hoping to find more communities willing to undertake this radical experiment in time together. Ultimately, as a society, we are going to need to have ecological practices. So what is this ecological? Remember the ecological conversion of the papacy that we need to be all ecologically converted. So now the gentleman is trying to find people who can volunteer, who are willing to undertake this radical step of keeping Sunday. It will be a voluntary and it will be experimentally but now the question is, do we really need to experiment on this? For we know what is happening. But now the question is, what exactly is pushing this? Brothers and sisters, let me actually conclude this focusing on these two art uh, on these articles. November 28, uh, Signs of the Times. November 2019, 1900. Many who are working for Sunday enforcement have never understood the claims of the Bible Sabbath and 
the false foundation on which the Sunday institutions rest. So they are working hard for Sunday enforcement, but they don't understand the true Sabbath and the meaning of the true Sabbath. As we have seen to this, uh, uh, in the article that we are reading, to them they talk of climate, they talk of resting of the soul, but the Sabbath is to honor the creator of the universe. It says, and they are blind to the results of Sunday legislation. Indeed, they will definitely regret when this legislation has been passed, when the beast of Revelation chapter 13 will be speaking as a dragon, when she is forcing all that there will not be any buying and selling. It says, and they are blind to the results of the Sunday legislation. They do not see that it would be a blow against religious liberty, but any movement in favor of religious legislation is really an act of conscience concession to the papacy which for so many ages is steadily were worried against liberty of conscience so there is nothing new they are doing except to push the biddings of the papacy in doing that they are do working for the papacy and as they work for the papacy even though they brought something good but the undercurrent is to give honor to the papacy. We are told that Sunday owes its existence as a so-called Christian institution to the mystery of iniquity and its enforcement will be a virtual recognition of the principles which are the very cornerstone of Romanism. When our nation shall so abjure the principles of its government as to enact a Sunday law, Protestantism will in its act join hands with the papacy. It will be giving life to the tyranny which has long been eagerly watching its opportunity to spring again into active despo despotism. So the papacy has been waiting for this for a very long time. And she's waiting longingly for that time when she'll be given a chance. So let them promote Sunday rest by law. Let them do all they can do via the vehicle of climate change. But the policy is of the purpose and it has nothing to do with God. They are not promoting the fourth commandment. They are promoting rebellion. And when the whole world will accept this and the evangelicals of America will push this into law, then definitely this will be fulfilled. Testimony volume, uh, testimonies to the church, volume 7, page 141. The substitution of the laws of men for the law of God. The exhortation by merely human authority of the Sunday in place of the Bible Sabbath is the last act in the drama. When this substitution becomes universal, God will reveal himself. He will arise in his majesty to shake terribly the earth. So... The last act in the drama is the successful implementation of the National Sunday Law. The declaration of the National Sunday Law. And when that happens, this will be a national ruin. This will be a national apostasy which will lead to the national ruin. Brothers and sisters, what should we do at this juncture? It's important, brothers and sisters, for us to understand the importance of keeping the Sabbath of the Lord. Because the Bible says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. To enjoy the blessings of the Sabbath. But to settle into the truth, both intellectually, understand the reason why you keep the Sabbath. You don't keep the Sabbath because of climate change. Climate change has nothing to do with the Sabbath. We keep the Sabbath specifically for the reasons given in Exodus chapter 20 verse 11 and in Genesis chapter 2 verse 1 to 3. God created. God rested. God sanctified. In honor to the God that created us, recognizing the God who created us, we have got a sign between us and his God 
And this is the Sabbath of the Lord, as we learn from Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 12, and Ezekiel chapter uh, 20, verse 20, that we keep the Sabbath as a sign between us and God, that we may know that is God that sanctifies us. And this Sabbath is a gift to humanity. We will keep the Sabbath even in heaven. Shall we pray? Blessed be your name, Father. May you give us grace to accept the true Sabbath and to enjoy the principle of the true Sabbath, to give honor to you, the God that created, the God who sanctifies us, and the God who will come to take us home one day soon. Give us grace, O Lord, to live according to it, thus says the Lord. Bless us, Lord, we plead with you. And we thank you for all that you have done for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Until then, brothers and sisters, may the Lord truly bless you. I look forward to see you in the next edition as we continue to cover many things regarding what is happening in the world today. May the Lord continue to bless. Amen. <music>